Alright, hello world, welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to uh, keep doing coding back 20 minutes, 20 minutes coding back, that's what it's called. Okay, so uh, today we're going to work on list one, section list one of the Python coding back challenge. Since it's 20 minutes, I will just started a timer, 20 minutes timer on my phone, and then we'll stop immediately once the timer um, has, you know, ended. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So given an array of integers, return true if six appears as either the first or the last element in that array. The array will be links one or more. Okay. So this is just a simple one. If non bracket zero, and that's gonna give you the first element. Equals equals six or now it's bracket negative one. Negative one, it's called negative indexing. It's just going the the other way, the back, um, the opposite. So the backward. So negative one gonna give you the last character, negative two going to give you the second to last, and negative three give you the third to last, etc. Equals equals to six, return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Perfect. All right. Let's see. Server. Okay, so I guess we're gonna do it vertically. Common and given an array of integers a and b return true if they have the same first element where they have the same last element. Both array will be links one or more. Okay, so in here I guess we can write if a bracket zero equals equals b bracket zero or a bracket negative one equals equals p bracket negative one return true otherwise return false there we go right so you just compare the end simple if statement good job with me all right reverse three given an array of integers links three return new array with the elements in reverse order um so there's a cheating way to do this. I believe is Let's return reverse. Let's see. Uh, okay. Never mind. Okay, so not you. I guess we'll just do I'm still reverse. And then return nums. Okay. So right, so we can just call this function. Or there's probably a better way to do it. Right? So in here we're not better way. So of course sometimes you're not gonna be allowed to use this method. This is a quick method. Um what we can do instead is we can actually try to manipulate manipulate manually using for loop. So I guess we can create a new list, right? Let's call it a result. And then in here we can say nums dot we can do this for num in oh no, no I don't have to do index for i in range. So this range is gonna be a little bit special. So we're gonna loop it reversely. So we're gonna start with lames nums minus one, that will be inclusive. We're gonna end with negative one. Since x exclusive it should bumps to zero, and they're gonna subtract one every time. So then, so basically every time it should go reverse. So if it starts with five, it should go to four, three, two, one, zero, stop. And then here we can do result.append nums bracket i return result. See that also works. So there's two solutions to this. Really depends. I mean, honestly, just use this unless someone forces you to do this manually, which could be weird. But there you go. All right. Middle way. Given two integer arrays a and b, each link three return new array links two containing their middle elements. So I guess we can just do this middle element. It's guaranteed to be one, zero, one, two, since the length, you know, length, like that. Right. 
All right, makes and given an array of integers, return a new array links two containing the first and last element from the original array. The original array will be links one one more. Um, first and last. Okay, so this is similar to what we did before. Let me do that. And there we go. So zero, so first element, negative one, the last element, put them in a list. All right. Given an integer array of links two return true if it contains a two or a three. So in here we can write as so we can do this. If two in nums or three in nums return true. Otherwise we're going to return false. So we're going to use the in keyword to check if and specific element is in an iterable, in this case, list, right? Okay. Oh, this is weird. All right. <laughs> Same first last. Given an array of integers, return true if the array is links one or more, and the first element and the last element are equal. So, in here, how to do this? If nums if length of nums is greater than one, and nums bracket zero equals equals nums bracket negative one, we return true. Otherwise, we can return false. There we go. Right. So check the lengths, and then compare the index. Okay. All right. So you can see this clearly level one because sometimes it just contains some random question like this. Hey, pi. Right, or did you? Okay, given an array of integer links through to the sum of all the elements. So, of course, you can do a loop where you can do, uh, since you know it's three, you can just do nums bracket zero plus num bracket one plus num bracket two. Or we can do this. We can use a sum function. Now we'll basically sum up every element in the iterable. In this case, sum up every number in this length three integer array. So by the way, if you're new to programming, array and list are used interchangeably in Python. They essentially are the same thing. But just Python just called it differently. In literally, I think in all other languages, um, array is what it's called. But it's pretty much just a list. Given an array of integer links three, return an array with element rotated left. So one, two, three becomes two, three, one. Again, since we know this is going to be links three, if we don't know it's going to be links three, this is going to be slightly interesting at least. At least. But since we know it's going to be uh, links three, I guess what we can just do is nums dot. Uh, okay, so nums dot written new. I need to look something up. Um, let's see. So remove by index list Python. Let's see if we can figure this out. I know there's a del cure. Okay, so or pop. Okay, so we're just gonna do pop. The last one. Then add to a specific index list Python. Okay, so we're gonna do insert. Let's look at the insert method, the syntax. So it's the index of the value, right? Nums dot insert. Oh, okay, never mind. So I need to a temporary variable. Store the last element. Well, actually, I want the first. I can just do append like that. So this is in place. In place means that I did not create a new list like what I did to the reverse reverse list. I did all the operation was um, just to the variable directly. So yeah, okay, good. Pass everything. So this is a classic 
it's not really swap. It's um, basically you take a number from the end, remove it, and then put it at the start. Right. Okay. Let's go next. All right. Do this one already. All right. Given an array of integer length three, figure out which one is larger, the first or the last element in the array, and set all the other elements to that value. Return a changed array. Okay. Um. All right, so I need to figure out which one's larger. I'm assuming, see, one of the, if you're doing this like in an interview, which I highly doubt because the question's relatively easy, just to put it that way. But see, one question when I ask is, what happens if you know, the first element, the last element is the same? Are the same? Like, yeah. So that's like a edge case. But we're just going to assume that never happens. So here, we're just going to say if nums bracket negative one, or let's do zero first. It's greater than nums bracket negative one. And here we can just return. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this three times. Not that, that. Otherwise, copy you, paste you, negative one, negative one, and negative one. Okay, perfect. All right. So basically, as you can see, what we did here is just a simple if and return this on this list. All right. Given an array of integers, return the sum of the first two elements in the array if the array length is less than two. Just sum of the element that exists. Return zero if the length is zero. Okay. So now this has slightly more logics to it. If length of nums zero return zero. Oh if length of nums is less than or equals to less than just less than two. In another or equals equals to one and just return nums bracket one and uh, nums bracket zero. Because it can be zero, it can't then less than two, right? It has to be integer, so then it has to be one positive integer, full number. Um, okay, oh yeah, length of uh okay, wait. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, never mind. Then we're gonna just do else return some Okay, so let's see, what do we do? Uh, oh, never mind, we just want the first two, right? Now the entire list. There we go, now that passed. I think this can be also another project idea for us to, uh, to build a coding bat platform. Like similar to coding bat, I think we did build one before. It's like an algo expert clone, which is similar just to the, you know, to it's a basically like a coding bat problem. I guess if we want we can we've I, there's more APIs now that we can call to interact with it. But um yeah. Okay. So I think we're just gonna keep doing lists, media and Python list problems. Alright. So according to my Timer, we have about six minutes left, so let's see how much we can do. Count evens. All right. So we're going to define a number count or define a variable count, and then we can just say for nums, see nums, right? Loops through everything. And then just like this said, we're going to do if num mod 2 equals equals zero, return. Uh, we're not return count plus equals one, and they're gonna return count at the end. So basically, what we're doing here is nums mod two. What that does is that gives you the remainder. So for example, five mod two that's going to give you one. Seven mod three that's going to give you one. Seven mod four that's going to give you three. Um, Ten mod two that's gonna give you zero, and three mod five, I think that's also gonna give you zero. So it's going to give you the remainder after it divides the two number in the order, right? 
Um, and if you think about it, all the even numbers will have one with this mathematical property that is it's divisible by two. That's a definition of an even number. It's divisible by two. So in this case, if it's divisible, di can't speak. If it's divisible by two, that means it must be zero. So that's what we have here. Okay. All right. Let's go to next. Uh, big diff. Given array lengths one or more of integers, return different between the largest and smallest value. Okay. So basically, we find the bigger values, right? So this is classic. We can say bigger, biggest, smallest, and we can we could use them if we want. Actually, no, we can just do this for num in nums. I should say this for i in range of lengths of nums minus one. The reason why I did it minus one is you'll see in a bit. And then here we can just say biggest equals max nums i nums i plus one smallest min nums i nums i. So basically what we're doing here is we're checking the current number, right? Current number, next number, and the next number we're using max. So max that's going to return the biggest, right? It's going to return the bigger end, main going to return the smaller end. So then we're just going to keep doing this to all the, all the elements. And then the reason we need minus one is because once it re if it reaches the last element, it doesn't have an element next to it anymore, so plus won't give you an error. Therefore, it has to do minus one. And then in here, we can return the difference. So return biggest minus smallest. Uh, okay, let's see. Unsupported. Huh. All right, let's just return biggest. All right. Huh. List and int. Not quite sure what is that supposed to mean. Let me put it in a Python compiler. Whoops. Um, yeah, we're just gonna use this one. Okay, so let's do big print, big diff, sensory, six. Um, okay, line eleven, line five. Oh, okay. Oops, that and that should sound like. Okay, uh, all right, what do we have here? Biggest minus smallest. Oh, okay, never mind. It's not nums one. This is gonna be, we're comparing the existing values. That's what we need to do. I'm gonna loop through everything. So we're comparing the existing value if it's bigger than the already, if it's bigger than the biggest value, then I'm gonna change to the biggest. If it's smaller to the smallest value, then I'm gonna set that to smallest. Um, so biggest, we could just set it to zero. Never mind, we can't. Wait, what's happening? Here?
Oh, so basically what we need to do is just in set biggest and smallest to some arb. So to set biggest, we need to set, set to arbitrarily low. So any actual value can change it. And for smallest, we need to do the opposite. All right, so as you guys can see here, that's the timer going off. Hopefully that's now not too loud, but um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, so in this video, we completed basic finish list one and the two question from list two. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. If you have any question or comment, feel free to comment down below. And as always, stay safe and have a great rest of your day. That was me. Oh.